coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. You need to know, child of God, that in the mind of God are those good things that he has for you. Individually, like you said, generally and specifically. And there is a way that you can pray God's thoughts, God's mind, God's will. That's another way of putting it mm -hmm. for your plan. life. God's plan into place for your life. Hello and welcome to Fresh Stew. Fresh Stew is a program designed just for you. It's designed to build you up and give you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. I am Pastor Nke Chiene and today on Fresh Stew, Pastor Shala is with me. And we are going to continue our message, God's, God's, God's good, good plans, plans for, for you. you. This has been so awesome yeah. so far. We've looked at two points. Yes. What were they? Uh, take a peek into God's mind. Take a peek into God's and heart. Into God's heart. And number two, ponder God's thoughts. Ponder or think, think God's, God's thoughts. thoughts. Yeah. Somebody's just tuning in for the first time for this message series. You're wondering God's heart, God's thoughts. Well, our text was from Jeremiah 29 yeah. from verse 10. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years and are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word mm. towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found by you, says the Lord. I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried away captive. So the third thing we need to understand if we're going to really get this truth that God has got good plans for you is you've got to pray mm. God's plan. Amen. So you peek into God's heart, you ponder, and then you pray. So you're guessing now we're on a P, <laughs> and a P, P, P. <laughs> pray, pray, pray God's plan. Jeremiah 29, 12 is our focus for this point, then you will call upon me and mm. pray mm. to me and I will listen to you. God mm. said to them, they should pray mm. to him. That means that God needed their involvement. So the fact that God has got great things mm -hmm. in his heart for you, mm -hmm. you know, he's shown you through his word and his spirit. Right. It doesn't mean it just happens voila, just like that. Mm -hmm. God's plan just manifests in your life. The fact that it's in God's heart 
doesn't mean it's going to become reality in your life. Right. He needs you to be involved. involved in he process. needs you involved in the process. So you can't be slipshod, laid back, mm -hmm. lackadaisical about your prayer life mm -hmm. and expect God's plans to happen just like that. You know, this is one of the things, yeah. spiritual laziness. Lord. You know, we've been talking about that. <laughs> we've been talking about that recently. Right. Right. Spiritual laziness is mm -hmm. one of the greatest problems mm -hmm. in the body of Christ lethargy, today. Lethargy, spiritual. Spiritual lethargy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's more shocking mm -hmm. when you find it among ministers. Mm -hmm. So if ministers are lazy and lethargic, about spiritual things, That's good. what hope do the people in the pew have? That's good. If at the pulpit were mm. lazy and lethargic, and you think ministry is just getting up in the morning and That's going right. to make some noise and come back and you right. know, no, no, receive some offerings and things like that. No, it's more than that. Mm. You need to get involved. You can't be split, slipshod, laid back. You know, if you stumble into God's plan for your life, That's you will good. stumble out of it. That's good. There are principles, there are processes, mm -hmm. there are prayers. Amen. There are principles, there are processes, there are prayers Amen, that lead you into Lord God's plan for your life. Mm. So if you're laid back, you're insensitive to the move of God, mm -hmm. you don't know the times and the seasons, mm. you will miss God's plan. And it will have nothing to do with God because God has his heart full of good things for you. Mm. And he's shown you in his word mm. and his spirit how to ponder and receive those things. So you must pray mm. God's plan. Glory be to God. Amen. This is really good. You will not fulfill his plans by chance. You know, sometimes we Pentecostals have this thing about, oh, the Holy Spirit will do everything for us. Yeah. And oh, there's a move of the Spirit. And I was just on my own and the heavens were rent open. And no, no, so sometimes that happens. But sometimes you need to get involved. Mm. God said, you will call, call upon me yeah. and you will pray to me and I will answer you. Amen. So he needs our oh, involvement. Mm. God's will, thoughts and plans for you will not happen without your involvement, without, without prayer. Wow. <laughs> you know, this, you know, you know, believers don't like it when responsibilities... Responsibility. It goes back to the lethargy thing we talked about, yeah. laziness. Just let, let God people. deal with it. I mean, if God said, I know my thoughts to give you a future, to give you a hope, then why didn't it just happen? Yes. Why did he in the same breath now say... say you will call up to me. Wow. You will pray to me. Wow. So he wants you up and doing. Wow. He doesn't want you laid back and giving excuses. Right. And when something doesn't work out, mm -hmm. you, oh, God, mm -hmm. God did That's good and good. bad. God that begins did. to answer some things for us. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need to take responsibility. Yeah. So look yeah. at the statement again. God's will, hmm. thoughts, and plans for you will not happen. Wow. Will not happen hmm. without your involvement, without prayer. Let me pause here and say, sometimes people can pray for you. Hmm. Sometimes people's prayers can influence God's plan and God's will That's for good. you. But it will never be 100% involvement mm -hmm. of everybody else except yourself. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who depend on prayer warriors. That's good. And those of you who depend on prayer prophets. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. But people depend on things like that. Or prayer, so, big prayer meetings. Big prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. And we gather and then they, mm -hmm. they, 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 there could be corporate support. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing about praying God's plan for your life? What are you doing with engaging with the will of God for your life? They will happen. They will not happen without your involvement or without prayer. Colossians 4.12. Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ, greets you. Look at the next phrase. Always laboring fervently for you in prayers. That's an example of someone laboring in prayers for the will of God to be established in someone else's life that you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. The will of God was there for them. The will of God was mm -hmm. settled before the foundation of the world That's for them. Good. Why didn't the will of God just happen for them? Why did there need to be an Epaphras mm. and others and them themselves yeah. laboring fervently? That does not sound like spiritual laziness. That's... That does not sound like lethargy. Mm -hmm. Laboring fervently, that's what may happen, that you may stand perfect perfect and wow. complete in all the will of God. From the ESV it reads, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf mm -hmm. in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. A vibrant prayer life is crucial to discovering, mm -hmm. being confident of, and accomplishing wow. God's will or purpose for your life. Wow. 
a wow. vibrant prayer life mm. is crucial mm. to discovering. Some of us are wondering, mm -hmm. wondering and wondering, <laughs> wondering and wondering <laughs> about God's purpose for our lives because we don't have a prayer life talked mm. as a vibrant one. Mm. It is crucial to discovering, becoming confident of, mm. and accomplishing God's will or purpose for your life. So if God says he knows the thoughts he thinks towards us, like we said, why doesn't he just perform them? Mm. Why does he get us involved? Listen to what John Wesley, great man of God, said. God is limited by our prayer life. Wow. God. Almost sounds... Almost sounds sacrilegious, sacrilegious or God blasphemous. Al God Almighty. Yes, God is limited mm. by our prayer life. Mm. It seems he can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks <sighs> him to. Wow. That's a stellar moment. John Wesley said, mm. God is limited by our prayer life. It seems he can do nothing for humanity unless someone asks him to. That's mm. one reason. The fact that God wills something doesn't mean yeah. it'll happen automatically. The fact that God wills something doesn't mean it will happen automatically. The will of God has to be discerned, spoken, prayed about, mm. communicated, acted upon. Mm. That's how it becomes reality in your life. Otherwise, it remains a thought, a plan, mm -hmm. an intention, mm -hmm. a good plan for God. The word of God would jump out of the pages of your Bible and become reality in your life. You engage the spirit of God. Mm. You embrace them as your thoughts. Yeah. You pray them. Mm. And then they become a plan that becomes reality in your life. Look at this story. And that shows us something else. I'll, I'll, I'll read this first. Mark 10, 46 to 52. Now they came to Jericho. He went, as he went out of Jericho and his disciples, a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And they heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then they warned him to be quiet. And he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man and saying to him, be of good cheer, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. Jesus answered and said to him, Why do you, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. This is another reason why God wants your involvement, because mm. God desires to be sought after. Amen. God desires to be asked. Many times, this is actually an expression of faith. Mm. He wants to see your faith in him. Look at this. Begin to ask yourself these questions. The three questions here. I want to read out and I want you to think and ponder these questions and understand that God desires, he shared all his thoughts, yeah. his plans in the wealth of his grace towards mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But you see, your faith is your response <laughs> to the grace of God. That's what it is. Your faith is your response to the grace of God. So God desires to be sought after because that becomes an expression of your faith in him. Mm. That's why the scripture says without faith, it's, it's impossible, impossible to please him. That's what the Bible says. So he, your faith becomes an expression. Because, okay, God, you already know the mm. thoughts and plans. Mm. Why don't you just do them? No, mm. I want you to seek after me. Mm. Why did, listen to these questions, why didn't Jesus respond to blind Bartimaeus the first mm. time? Mm. Didn't he hear him? Mm. Why did Bartimaeus have to raise his voice louder? Mm. Was Jesus deaf? Certainly, certainly not. He heard him. He, he heard him the first time, mm. but he had to call again louder. And then to crown it all, when he finally got Jesus' attention, Jesus asked him what looked like a dumb question. What do you want me to do for you? Wow. A blind man. Today, today Jesus will be accused of if being insensitive. insensitive. Yes. Uh, Not the, being, press, the press would have a fear. They will go to town, but oh. certain, certain parts of the world. Oh. oh, there was this blind man. It was bad enough you didn't answer him. Mm. Bad enough you made him shout. Mm. You abused his human rights. <laughs> and then he now got to you and you asked him, mm. Were well, you trying to make fun you of him? him feel, feel bad, bad for asking. You, 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 you affected his self-worth. Self <laughs> but Jesus said, what do you want? A blind man. Wow. He desires to be sought after. Wow. The wealth of grace was there. Mm -hmm. There is a wealth of grace that has God's plan for your life, child Amen. of God. But will you seek after him mm. by faith? Mm. Without faith, it's impossible mm. to please God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. So still looking at this, <laughs> prayer, we're talking about seeking God and praying unto God. Remember, that's our point. Mm -hmm. 
then prayer, we need to realize, is born out of a revelation of the mind or the plan of God. Mm -hmm. That's why we started by saying, take a peek into God's, into God's heart or mind. Find out what's there. Find out what's there. And then the next one, uh, ponder on those thoughts because his thoughts and what you find there now establish what is his will. And then that gives you the right of uh, approach when it comes to prayer. So prayer is not asking God to do what he doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. Prayer is not coercing, cajoling, convincing, convincing a, a, a reluctant God mm -hmm. to do what he doesn't want to do. And again, we need to be re re released from these strongholds in our minds. You know, we make statements like bombarding the gates of he heaven. Push, push. push. Uh, you know, even have, people have acronyms across this. Pray until something happens and, you know, they give the idea of works and that you're, you're, you're trying to convince a God. Difficult a diff God is difficult. So God is almost like that, your boss, who is difficult, and you convince him then reluctantly. He says, okay, yes, I'm going to do this. We have such warped concepts, sadly, and it gives a wrong impression of who our God is. You've, you've, it's a phrase you've used occasionally. It's character assassination so it of God. You misrepresent him. And people have that approach. Well, God already has good plans for you. Remember before the foundation of the world, he already orchestrated it. He already put it in place. So that tells you that even though he needs to be sought after, he, you're not sought, seeking after him, you know, to convince him to do something. Mm -hmm. You're seeking after him in response. Faith, mm -hmm. like you said, is man's response to God's grace. motion already mm -hmm. in grace. So yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah. Look at Matthew 7. Verse 7 to 11. So the thoughts of God for you on any issue will establish the will of God and serve as the basis of your prayer. In Matthew 7, Jesus said in verse 7, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Verse 11. If you then being evil know how to give, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven Give good things to those who ask him. You notice that you must ask. He has good things to give. Then why didn't he, and if you read it, he says he already knows what you want. Why didn't he just go ahead and do it without your asking? No, he needs your involvement. He needs to know that you're on the same page with him. And really, you actually show that you want this desire by giving yourself, peeking into his mind, knowing his plans for you, and then say, whoa, this is what God has. God, you have this thing for me. Well, I'm going for gold. I'm going for what you have. And then you join forces with him, and then he gives those good things that he has for you. So you need to know, child of God, that in the mind of God are those good things that he has for you. Individually, like you said, generally and specifically. And there is a way that you can pray God's thoughts, God's mind, God's will. That's another way of putting it mm, for your plan. life. God's plan into place for your life. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. What of if I told you that all your prayers could be answered? Ooh. You know, what if you, you are told that? You know, people have this idea that when you pray, God sometimes says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, I'm he thinking says, about I'm it. thinking about it. Human <laughs> beings, <me> time. <laughs> <laughs> human beings can take time. They can say yes. They can say no. But the Bible is specific. God tells us how he wants to be sought after actually in prayer. And look at 1 John 5 here, verse 14. Now, this is a confident that we, confidence that we have in him, mm -hmm. that if we ask anything, According to his, his will. will. Oh, according to his will, then he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So this verse is telling us the first premise, every other thing in these verses builds on the first premise. That is, if we ask anything according to his will. So once you establish the will of God in prayer and you tick that, then every other checkbox ticks. Is, uh, ticks. <laughs> ticks is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the annoying thing. <laughs> every other checkbox 
Six. Six. All right? So <laughs> you discover this is his will. Mm. You've gone into his mind. You've gotten into his word. Mm. You've discovered the will. You tick it. Mm. He says, once you ask anything according to his will, then he hears. So let's pray this way. Every prayer God hears, he answers. And answering with God means you have. So the thing then is to find out how will I get him to hear me? And that is, I need to pray according to his will. So how do I know his will? I know his will by his word. That is one way. Mm -hmm. And once I peek into his mind, remember we said his mind, his word contains his, 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 his word contains his thoughts, mm -hmm. his mind, his will. But there's another way. Uh -huh. There's another way. For those specific areas where you've either peeked into his mind specifically for you, mm -hmm. or you just want to cash into his mind and get it to work. Let me show you another verse. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, 26 to 28. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mm -hmm. mind of mm -hmm. the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according, according to, to the, the will, will of God. Same there phrase. you are. Same phrase. The key phrase. Right. The one the that makes God hear. Amen. And therefore he answers he always. And he answers. Glory and then verse God. 28 then says, And we know that all things work together. Notice the next word. For good. good. Those are the good thoughts we're talking about, child of God. To those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. People abuse verse 28. And anything happens, you know, it works for good. Anything, no, that is one of his sacred cows. I think like Charles Capps calls them. But really, if you keep it in context, what is he saying? All things you have prayed according to the will of God, engaging the mind of the spirit in the place of prayer, praying in the spirit. This is a specific kind of prayer. We don't have time to go into that. Mm -hmm. But this incorporates praying in tongues, other tongues, which really engages the will of God, the mind of God, all those things that you have prayed, God will cause it to work together for your good. And it doesn't matter if they've been pitfalls, if they've been roadblocks, God has a way of recalibrating and navigating mm. you back into the center of his will and mm. his thoughts for you will come to pass as you seek him according to his will and pray his will and his thoughts. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just before you round up, this, why don't you just read this, okay. this statement here you have here, this last one. The Prayer word. is labor. Yes, okay. The, again, that's from that uh, Colossians 4.12. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should read that one more mm -hmm. time. Epaphras, who is one of you, a born servant of Christ, greets you, always laboring. That's the key. The key yes. There's labor. There's labor. There's be diligence. There's, yes, there's labor. So prayer is labor. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that. Like you said at the beginning, you can't be like lackadaisical or lazy as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Prayer is labor. God is not going to do your praying for you. Mm -hmm. He will inspire. He will lead and empower your prayer life. He will direct it, but you must get down to the business of prayer. Maybe I should read it again. Prayer okay. is labor. God is not going to do your praying for you. Mm -hmm. He will inspire. Mm -hmm. He will lead mm -hmm. and empower your prayer life. Mm -hmm but you must get down into the business of prayer. Oh, glory be to God. Thank, Thank you, you, Father. Oh, Thank Lord. you, Father. Mm. We're ready to get down to the business yeah. of prayer. Yeah. We're ready to pray your will, mm. pray your thoughts, Thank pray you. your plans Thank for you. us. Thank you for these good plans for every single one who's watching. It doesn't matter the mess they are in or the mess they have been in, or even if they think they're in a good place, mm. there is a good plan mm -hmm. you've got for them. There Thank is you. a future and a hope. Thank you. Lord. Thank you for the ability to have direct access to you. Mm. Thank you for pondering your thoughts and receiving them yeah. as our own. Amen. And thank you for getting down to the business of prayer. Mm. We give you praise. Thank you. The one who hears us when we pray according to his will and the one who answers us Amen. always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. 
Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question. And he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide. And he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God, and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew which is 0700-3737-4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.